Hi guys, Pigmoon here with another video. Now the next in the C RSCF series a plane system at a time. And let's move on to the F-16. Let's go! The F-16 Falcon for the RSCF was first announced to the public in 1985 uh, under Peace Carving 1 uh, FMS program. FMS is a foreign military sales program that uh, I think US uh, sells its uh, weapons to its, uh, I would say, like air-like countries but would need the uh, Congress approval. The single-seat uh, engine uh, F-16 OCU was the one that was pitched uh, to RSCF and it allowed faster response uh, to any potential threat in the early days, uh, in those days, uh, in the Singapore FIR or in the Singapore airspace, which coincidentally, uh, much of the FIR is in the South China Sea. But this was pre-911 days when there was very little indication that the uh, hijacked aircraft would be used as kamikaze weapons by carries. Potential intruders to the airspace was often uh, conceptualized as other military aircraft or military threats. Uh, so the aircraft was uh, delivered in 1989 and shortly after the first uh, F-16 Howl loss uh, was in 1990 when uh, two of the uh, F-16s collided mid-flight while on a, during training in the South China Sea. Uh, one of them ejected and the other jet required re uh, recovered with a severe damage to the airframe. Uh, shortly after, in a few years, Peace Carving 2 was announced in 1993 and uh, it was open competition with other competitors uh, like the F-18 uh, CD uh, but they were rejected uh, for more F-16s instead. Uh, this competition was, I think, re-triggered uh, to include F-18s after the mid-29s and the F-18s were more Asia. So these 18 new jets were Block 52 compared to the previous ones which were supposedly Block 15 but actually a uh, Block 30 airframe. Uh, similarly with the F100 uh, engines but with a uh, downrated uh, uh, avionics and targeting systems. Uh, this, although downrated, uh, it allowed the suppression of uh, enemy air defense uh, missions uh, through this purchase and uh, airframe also included the extended dorsal fin to accommodate the additional ECM systems that the uh, even the uh, USAF uh, jets did not have. Mm, the newer jets were also equipped with a uh, better radar, the APG-68, still an uh, X-Band uh, Doppler, Pulse Doppler, uh, upgraded from the previous APG-66, and the radar en enhances uh, quite a fair bit of air ground capability, and uh, the F-16s were also able to provide additional operating modes of the radar, which included the things like the synthetic aperture radar mode. I guess it's an air to I guess, I mean, I know that it's an air to ground uh, mapping mode. Uh, meanwhile, just about 5-7 years down the road, purchase of another 20 uh, pure D uh, Block 52 jets were announced in 2000 under Peace Carving 4. The uh, Twin C jets uh, had extensive uh, ECM capability similar to the uh, previous purchase through the dorsal spine and also conformal fuel tanks for extended range. Uh, this was only a re replicated in uh, other countries uh, under the, uh, if I'm not wrong, the F-16 uh, I or so far series uh, by Israel. So the earlier AV models were slowly eased out of service and transferred to uh, RTAF in uh, Royal Thai Air Force in 2004 after they were upgraded by ST Aerospace to the Falcon 1 standards. I guess uh, up upgrading the, uh, the uh, avionics and uh, I think a slight modification to the radar. Uh, and also this ended the uh, AV models in service in the uh, RSCF and leaves the Block 52 as the sole uh, standard block within the RCF F-16s. So let's look at look at the chart now between a PC-1 and a PC-4. I think in between you can see a Landis, uh, Lee Senpai, sorry not Landis, F-16C, four of them, uh, sorry, 12 of them, uh, four Cs and uh, eight Ds. This was actually uh, in between uh, PC-2 and PC-3 uh, purchases when uh, there were not enough aircraft but they had really leased it and, uh, from uh, Lockheed and Indonesia. And I eventually bought it from a Lockheed Direct. This is not uh, technically not an FMS program. So this fleet of F-16s uh, or Block 52s make up the core bulk of the RSAF multi-role fighter complement uh, at that point of time, uh, where the F-5Es uh, were relegated to air defense roles and the A-4s uh, SUs were decommissioned by 2005. But again, the Falcons, uh, though uh, highly capable, still limited by their operational range, uh, less the uh, D-plus or the Block 52Ds uh, in Peace Carving 4, and uh, this would uh, impact their loiter time on station and also limit their scope of the missions they can carry out within every wave. 
this was eventually resolved by uh, the introduction of the KC-135 tanker in 1999. The extended range and loiter time provided by the introduction of the tanker allowed the F-16s to effectively perform strike roles in extended ranges and continue to uh, loiter in theatre after the uh, mission, uh, the air-to-ground mission has been completed to carry on uh, secondary missions, uh, air-to-air or even uh, uh, be on scene commander etc. So this combat effectiveness due to the extended range is uh, thus greatly enhanced and I think it's a key uh, milestone in uh, RSAF development where uh, long range, long uh, on station time fighter operations was not previously possible. Like or subscribe or add a comment in the bottom and we can further this discussion and whether this whole thing is actually moving or not. Thanks for watching.